Wow, what a bite. Come on, get out of those dollar pads. We've got a partly cloudy to cloudy day today. And it's nice and warm. That's a smallmouth there. I'm out here this morning exploring a new lake and uh, I decided to start with a popper. It's a goal today or for the next couple of hours here is just to really figure out what kind of retrieve these bass want. I know this lake's got some large mouth and small mouth in it. As soon as I launched the boat uh, this morning, uh, I noticed that tannic colored water. And whenever I'm fishing tannic colored water, you know, it's that real clear, but kind of dark coffee color to it. I like going with like the foil finish uh, lures. For whatever reason, that real foil, flashy finish in that darker color tannic water seems to work better than those kind of opaques and those translucent colors. So I went with a baby bass pattern on my popper this morning, and uh, hopefully we get a couple big bites on this top water first thing. All right, so since this is a brand new lake to me, I'm real unfamiliar with this lake. I really just put the trolling motor down and just started fishing what looks good visually. Um, since I'm using a top water popper here, there's two retrieves that I utilize when breaking down a brand new lake and breaking it down quickly and effectively. Um, the first retrieve is gonna be just that classic bloop, bloop, pause, bloop, pause. Just a real slow retrieve. And I use that retrieve Whenever I'm fishing targets, whether it be a isolated stump, a single lay down, or in this case, just a hole. a hole. The hole could be the size of a trash can lid, the hole could be the size of my boat, but a hole in the pads, in the grass, whatever it is. So I'm, whenever I'm fishing actual targets, single targets, I like that stop, pause, and bloop real slow, kind of calls them up and they eat it. The other retrieve I use when breaking down lakes quickly is just a walking retrieve. And I use that along all the grass lines whenever I have like big openings, long casts, and I'm just gonna go ahead and walk the popper back just like you would um, a, a dog X or a, a spook, whatever it might be, like a walking bait. And I could walk that popper along quickly. It spits, it draws a lot of fish out to the edges of this grass and it gets a lot of bites. So those are the two retrieves I use when breaking down a lake. And those are the two retrieves we're gonna use here on this dollar pad flat. If you look at where the line tie is on this popper, it's a little bit higher in the cup of the mouth. And when you cast it out there and when, it, when you're using braided line like I am here today, the shortest little chop, the shortest little pop will almost force that mouth down onto the surface of the water. And that's what creates that splash. That's what creates that bloop. And that's what creates just kind of that, that real cupping of the water and pushing of the water. And that's what drives those bass nuts. So when the water's slick, calm like this, those long casts and real nice short chops um, gets that bait working the way it needs to be working and spitting the way it needs to be spitting. And fish will swim a long way to get this thing off the surface. As far as the rod goes, I like throwing like the sub seven foot rods, uh, meaning, you know, I'm throwing a six foot 11. This, this is a 110 special, so it's a jerkbait rod. It's got a real short butt to it, so I could be real accurate in these holes. Um, and it's kind of a slower action so that when one sucks it off the, off the surface, that rod kind of loads up and drives those treble hooks home. Um, so there's two really um, setups that you could use. One is a real uh, kind of sh uh, short and soft rod with a no stretch braided line, like a 40 pound test. That's what I've got here today. And then the other setup you could use is like a spinnerbait rod, kind of a shorter or a lighter worm rod. I like that, again, I like that, um, you know, six foot 10, six foot 11, even a six foot six, kind of a spinnerbait, medium heavy type action with monofilament. A lot of the old school popper uh, fishermen, you know, your Zell Rollins and guys like that down in Texas, they love throwing poppers on monofilament, but you have to compensate for all that stretch uh, with a slightly stiffer rod, and that would be like a spinnerbait type rod. There's one. Gaw. Got him again. He came back for it. Is that smallmouth? <laughs> that one somersaulted it. Oh, still exploring around. That's a a real dark colored smallmouth. That one somersaulted it. That was just the kind of a steady chopping retrieve, almost like I was walking it. Not a big one, but fun. 
after a you know half a day or so of casting around some braid it starts to bleach out you know with the uv uh, sun and everything so what i like to do is just grab that sharpie put a little slit in it and then run it up and down my line it helps camouflage the that 40 pound test braid a little bit better especially in this dark tannic color water there's less contrast there um, so you know if you happen to come across a real picky bass you know just it looks like a kind of a natural line coming off of it and not that real bright bleach color. One thing to look out for too when you're throwing a popper or any top water at that around vegetation. Um, I've been fishing this flat with dollar pads on it and always pay attention to kind of you know where the dollar pads are growing and pay attention when the dollar pads end and a different species of vegetation starts growing. Like in this case, I see a line of milfoil right through here. So where the dollar pads meet the milfoil, that typically means a bottom composition uh, change. And whether it means, you, you know, it goes from mud to, to rock or from gravel to sand or whatever it is, typically when, you know, you have a vegetation change like that, it means a nice little transition. And those are the types of spots big fish like hanging out on. There's one. Oh yeah. Oh, we came off. That fish smoked it. But that's a pretty good clue right there. From a distance, I saw there was an opening in the pads. And as I got, as I got closer, there's two giant rocks right there. So it was just something different in the pads. So moving forward, that's what we'll pay attention to is a hard bottom or boulders uh, mixed in with the dollar pads. That one smoked it. Oh gosh, another one. Yeah. Oh. But it ate, it ate it good, but the splash wasn't huge. Reminds me of those uh, growing up on the California Delta, some of the biggest topwater bites on a frog or a buzzbait or a popper. They just come up and get it like it's an insect. A nice one. I mean, he got it, got it. It was not coming off. It's the very next cast. All right, so we decided to change lakes. We caught some, you know, caught some numbers fishing those little dollar pads, caught some smallmouth, couple small largemouth, uh, but we moved down to a big lake and uh, I'm still in the mood to throw some top water, so I've, I'd switched up went to a smaller popper. I know about some isolated rocks uh, along this stretch of uh, bank across here. So I'm gonna try to catch some big smallmouth on that little popper. It's a good day for it. It's cloudy, a little bit of a breeze. Um, let's see if we can swap things up a little bit and downsize our top water and try to catch some big old smallmouth. So today, instead of you know targeting those isolated patches of grass and openings in the dollar pads, I rigged up a smaller popper on a, on a spinning rod, and it's just my drop shot rod. Tied up a, like a little monofilament leader so that it's, the nose stays up. It's about a 14 inch monofilament leader. I'm just gonna pop it across isolated boulders. I haven't been to this area in a while. I know there's some isolated spots I have marked here, but if we're just looking for some big topwater eating smallmouth with this downsized popper. The beauty is it's kind of cloudy out. I can't really see where the boulders are, but I could see the color changes. And if I place this popper over the top of them and just kind of pop it along, um, you know, one of those big ones, if they get a good look at it, they'll come up and smash it. Got him. Oh my gosh. I mean, smashed it. That was awesome. I mean, smash that popper. You know, where most people throw a, you know, this is kind of a popular flat, some isolated cover on it. Where most guys throw a small spy bait or a small jerk bait, they don't see a lot of topwater baits right here, especially the smaller variety. No, oh, come here. Come on. Yeah, that was fun. Just popping it across, pop, 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 pop. 
like smashed it, T-boned it. That was awesome. Dude, that was cool. Nothing like big small mouth on small top waters. Look at that, like crushed it. Awesome, let's get another. I know a lot of guys in, you know, in Texas and all through the South that throw, you know, medium to big size poppers for big largemouth when they're on shad. But when you downsize a popper um, and throw it on spinning reel, light line, et cetera, um, not only can you imitate a, just a small shad like later in the year, through, you know, in the fall times, but like all throughout the year, you could imitate just an insect on the surface. And I've never met a bass, whether it's a two pounder or a 12 pounder, they always eat insects. And you know, that's, this is what this looks like. And today I'm just kind of imitating, you know, some of the mayflies that hatch through the summer months, um, or just those itty bitty minnows that are on in this fishery. I mean, they just can't resist, especially the big ones. There's something about big ones that key in on topwater lures. And if you think about it, they have that little morsel pinned. It cannot go 180 degrees upwards because it is on the ceiling and, uh, and it drives big fish nuts. It's a supernatural manner, especially when there's those mayflies around or any type of insect like dragonflies on the surface. Today is such a good day for a little, little downsized popper here. Got just a slight chop where they can't get a real good look at it. On that long cast, I could hear that thing blooping. Boop, 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 boop. That's what you want. I could see the color changes. I could see just kind of rock boulders down there, six to eight feet of water. Water's crystal clear, so I'm just trying to burn it, kind of past these boulders and then kill it and then start it back up again. Again, the beauty of a popper is the ability to just deposit, just deposit and it just looks supernatural to them. The feather treble is just sitting there and then chug, chug, chug along, and that's when they get it. It's generally after the pause, just like when you're frog fishing and you give it that nice pause right there in the strike zone. In this case, it's isolated boulders. Got him. Smoked it off the surface. Oh, big one. Get out of those rocks, man. Fishing shallow, like four to six feet. There's mussels all over them. Don't stay on there. <laughs> that was the coolest bite. I paused it and then sped it up. Oh, come here. Come here. Sounded like a bluegill eating a bug off the surface. Come here. Yeah. Look at that humpback. <laughs> oh, another one on the Pop X. That's a gorgeous smallmouth. <laughs> Looks like a drum. That is awesome, man. Big old topwater smallmouth. I'm a popper on a spinning rod. Poppers on isolated cover. Catch fish. And that is a beautiful smallmouth right there on a spinning setup. We started out throwing a larger popper around grass and docks and dark water. Caught a few. And we ended up on this clear water lake here, fishing shallow rocks, catching big old small mouth on top, man. Does not get any better than that. That was one of the coolest top water bites I've ever had. Yes, that's awesome.